speed, efficiency, accuracy, and quality. These are the tenets of the art of assembly. It is a delicate dance of innovation and consistency. It is the perfect storm of progress and grace. It is an ever-evolving journey to find life in the deadlines. Between every turn of a socket wrench, between every hiss of melting solder, there is a moment where time stands still. Despite the chaos of life, assembly stands as a pillar of objectivity. There is a musicality to assembly, a rhythm, a pulse, input jack, output jack, switch, and screws. Over and over, like waves crashing upon the shore. It isn't good enough to love the thing being made. You must be obsessed with the things that make the things. Now join us today on the JHS show as we uncover the philosophy, the mystery, and the heart of the art of assembly. Welcome to the show, everyone. How are we doing? We good? Wow. You got really a little teary eyed. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I, I almost <sighs> cried for a second, but I knew I, I we had to, you know, get you know, the show going. When I tell people what my job is, they're like, guitar pedals like nobody gets it yeah and i feel like for the first time in my life i've really felt seen and heard i'm glad i'm glad i could i'm glad i could uh, sum up your experience so welcome to the jhs show live we've got some wonderful guests and we are going to be talking about how we build pedals here at jhs uh we talk a lot about pedals we talk a lot about other companies where the Mm -hmm. pedals were made how other pedals were made. Mm -hmm. We even made an episode all about how the company got started. Mm -hmm. But where are we now? And what are we doing now to create these, if I do say so myself, pretty amazing products? You know, what, what, go ahead. It's it's about the journey. It is about the journey. It's not just about, you know, where we, where we are now, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's not you know about I mean? the destination. It's about the journey. That's right. Yeah. Bell. That's, that's yeah. Kinda, yeah. Yes. I, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yes. yes. Yeah. You, you feel me? I do. Okay. Yep. I Thanks, do. Man. It's amazing. So we're going to start our journey right now. I'm just going to introduce everybody. Uh, this is Bell. Bell is the production supervisor. supervisor. That's right. And not only is she the production supervisor, she, supervisor, hold, uh, uh, Not only is the she. Oh my God. Hey man, you you got this. Try Deep again. Breath. Not only is she yep. the production supervisor, but she's also my sister. Yeah. 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 Most she, people don't know me by Bell. Most people know me by Nick's sister. Or Octavia. Or Octavia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bell also starred in um, Pedals the Musical as Octavia. Yes. And you did amazing, Octavia. by the way. Octavia. Yep, exactly. Um, and then we've got over here at the pedal building uh, station, we've got Driller, the newest member hey. of the team. Driller <laughs> just started on the media team and he actually came off of the assembly line. So mm-hmm. we're like, kind of, this is like a revisiting your roots. Yeah. Back to your Absolutely. roots, kiddo. That's yeah. right. Two weeks ago. Exactly. <laughs> all those, all that time ago, two weeks ago. And then we've got Addison. He's going to be in the uh, comment section and also building pedals. In the chat. Addison, you have mm-hmm. a little experience building some pedals. I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I have, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 under my belt. Yeah. There's a picture <laughs> here. Let's let's pull this picture up really quick. Look. Aww. There's Addison and his awesome wife, Beck, hey. uh, yep. and they did all of the building of the uh, overdrive preamp, the like reissue ones. Yeah, we did the morning glories as well. Yeah. We did some of them, Belle, and and, uh, and her boyfriend did mm-hmm. some of them as well. But Amazing. Yep. So, How did Beck enjoy that experience? She actually liked it. Yeah. 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 yeah she really liked it. She's a creative person too, and so she uh, she's like, I enjoy sometimes just having a, like a 
repeatable monotonous yes. yeah. thing you know put on a book and listen was to it, it was like a like, relationship building it experience was. yeah it was, great. <laughs> it was great really brought you together it did as a pedals couple. can do yes. that yeah. yeah yep yeah pedals are very powerful they are yeah and mysterious our marriage is stronger because of jhs thank you jhs <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's amazing so yeah speaking of that meditative process mm. we wanted to invite you along a journey to to show you exactly what that process is but before we do that i want to show you kind of where we were so that we can appreciate where we are yeah um so if we can go to the top down camera each one of our pedals has gone through multiple variations i don't need this anymore uh each pedal has had like like a child stages mm. um yes. and as you can see here i have the stages of the morning glory um, this is a very early model. As you can see, there's some 3M tape holding it down. This thing still works. It still it still makes the morning glory sound. Mm -hmm. um, but then we eventually moved on to a smaller case. And you can see a little bit of a, a, a better looking board. Got some hot glue. Bell, how do you feel about hot glue holding a circuit board down? Oh. Does it make you cringe just a little bit? Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And then... I um, feel safe here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Around, I think it was twenty later 2010, uh, 2011, 2012. It was a long time ago. I, you know, my brain can only hold so much information. We started getting these fancy green boards. Um, and there's a board house in Kansas City that started putting these together for us. They actually would populate, and by populate, I mean put all the little components into the circuit board for us. So by the time it got to us, mm -hmm. all we had to do was wire. Before that, we were having to populate each board too, which just added like a thousand hours to the process. Mm -hmm. um, and Bell, knowing how many pedals we build today, you can only imagine how much extra time yes. it would cost to populate these boards. Yes. So this is like my era of boards here where I used to work on the assembly line and also manage slash administrate the assembly hey. line. Um, so Belle and I share this journey of production administration. We share a bond. Yes. The journey. yes. That goes beyond yes. blood. Right. Um, and then there, here's another version. This is, I believe this says, uh, this is serial number eight. So this is like the eighth version of this, um, type of circuit or this type of layout and then there's an updated version here and then we have the red remote version and you can see now we've graduated from instead of having to wire the switches there's an in, there's an entire separate board mm -hmm. that the switch goes into and the jacks are also mounted and that switches over to some more surface mounted uh, parts that one on your left with the gray wires. That's kind of where I yes jumped This in. is like your era. That's my era. Yeah, yep. this is where you came in and you can see here too Like we had to you can see the LED right here We had to put wires on each individual LED that was a, a pretty just you, you'd think it was simple But when you're have a ton of pedals coming through a line it can be is very it? taxing I will say that was the version, the era I jumped in on, but we did have pre-cut wire. Oh, yes, when that's I right. When I started, when so, you were running things, you guys were measuring out your own wire. Yeah, and to put that into context, so you guys see, th this is, we're really getting in the nitty gritty. This is really oh, yeah. nerdy, but you can see how there's all of this wire in here, right? It's just a, it's a, it's a tangled mess. One of the things that we developed, and we... I feel like I did this. I don't want to pat myself on the back Go for too it. much. You Is that a saying? That's, you can, you're allowed to do that. I discovered that you really only needed certain lengths and mm -hmm. we could get away with only having like three specific lengths of mm -hmm. wire. So eventually we bought a wire cutter that you could program to cut specific lengths. Whoa. So we would be like, I think it was like two and a half, three, four, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we would just specifically use those lengths and we would program the machine and it would chop up a bunch of wire. Two, and then, two and a half, three, four, four and a half. That's right. Because I'm right. sure that's really important information that everybody really wanted but, to know. But those are details that really mattered because yes. <laughs> having to cut your own wire just took time. And a part of uh, progressing this uh, process from this to now this kind of board, we had to figure out how many ways can we 
take these mm-hmm. processes and make them shorter. So we were like, okay, let's create specific cut wire mm-hmm. lengths. And we ended up actually just ordering pre-cut wire mm-hmm. online. Um, this is that era. You can see this, this black wire. If you have um, a morning glory that has, well, this might not be fully accurate uh, with like black wire. And it's like a, if you see any that are this style of wiring and it's like black, it'll most likely be some of that Mm pre-ordered cut wire. Um, That was, it was honestly saved us so much time. It was so, wow, excuse me. Uh, (laughs) Saved us so much time. It's okay. This was just on, this just goes on the history wall. Um, Anyway, so yeah, in the journey to make things faster and faster, we've just continually um, in, uh, not necessarily innovated. You could I say think inno- I, I would think we say, could say I innovated. I think I would call it innovation. I have a question yeah. uh, from the chat. People want to know how much blood are left over in these circuits. Or how much human, blood? human fingertip um, skin. I used you know I mean? to burn the ends of my hair <gasps> soldering all the time. And I would serious? have to go home and cut my burnt ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That that puts a whole new definition to burnt ends. Um, I yes. believe that I there is I think a, a warbletron. I think someone has it on in our Facebook. There's a Facebook group, and they have a warbletron that has blood in it, and that's mine. So please don't clone me. Oh okay? no! Because one of us, only one of us, can survive. Um, so jumping forward to now, this is what our boards look like. Uh, there's literally mm. no, it's amazing. Like, <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, the only thing that's being soldered on here are the foot switches. Mm-hmm. So um, that just saves so much, so much time. And it's just, it's, it's, a, it makes my heart happy. It's like these little things, like being able to see this and know that this used to be a reality. Like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So you can kind of see the progression over time. Um, Let's pull up these pictures that I have because I've got some illustrations. Here, here we have. Oh, oh, there we go. This is Josh in the Pink Palace, and if you watched our History of JHS show, like a good sus- subscribe, like a good subscriber should, you'll know all about the Pink Palace. You should go watch that. We will drop that link in the somewhere. Can someone drop that link somewhere? That's available. Which, I'm sorry, say that. The history of JHS. Nice. Yeah, let's do that. So this is uh, where Josh used to build pedals, like this era of JHS. Um, I'm going to toggle through here. This is where (laughs) I first started. (laughs) And this is me doing a sick dunk. Um, We did have a, like, proportionally half-size basketball court Mm. in the back of this, uh, this warehouse area. And you can see on the... In the uh, left quadrant of the photo, there is a white shelf. Bell, that is where we would store all the cases oh my God. that we needed for orders. How often did you break or knock things over doing sick dunks? Um, it wasn't so much the sick dunks. Uh, our GM, Steve, who most of you should know if you did watch the History of JHS video, he used to... Um, Man, those are wild times. We would have this little basketball floating around, and he would literally punt the ball, and it would just <laughs> bounce across the room. And it was just this way that we would all relieve stress, and it yeah. was hyper chaotic. Because when you're in the flow yeah. of assembly, yeah. and you're in that meditative state, sometimes you need a little zapper, a little zapper reality. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'll say this: I would. This is prison. We we were all at this point. We were individually. Oh, I see pulling orders off of a wall of a bins okay and each one of us were sitting down and building one thing at a time something completely different so you had no zen that's why so you needed the chaos there was no assembly line here mm-hmm. um later let me see if i can get through here Guys, I, I just want to let you know yeah, real quick up? if i can interrupt yeah you um, can interrupt joshua Heath scott is in the chat and he did just oh, no. top chat us oh cool cool so i just want to say he thank, top you. Chatted us. <laughs> thank you thank you thank josh you josh scott also steve says nick is lying what am I lying about? About punting the ball, I would imagine. I'm absolutely that's, not lying. Okay. That's, he, I could imagine that, that's the truth. I don't that, know. That absolutely happened. All right. It uh, checks out. It, it's oh. 100% true. Josh says Steve was injured. It's a great chat. That is today, true. Steve oh what did get injured playing on the half-court basketball. Let's just go back here. 
This is story time. So we would take breaks and we would all do uh, like three on three basketball. And one day Steve was just driving towards the hoop and he caught a fingernail right across <laughs> his eyelid and he like reaches up and there's just blood everywhere. And he just was like, well, I guess I have to go to the doctor now. And it <laughs> oh, was no. it was kind of awesome. So, yeah, it was amazing. And, you know, we needed the basketball was our way around the chaos. Steve uh, says I'm filing a workman's comp claim for 2014. Well, <laughs> he's he's going to have to take that up with himself. Up with <laughs> <laughs> um, there's me uh, building some what looks like some panther cubs, maybe. Uh, there's so me. Oh, this is actually out of slightly out of order. This was my first bench. Uh, this was behind a uh, air conditioning unit that would drip behind my desk that I had to catch water in constantly. Um, you can see that little washcloth that we used so that we didn't scratch the pedals on the wooden surface. Mm. Um, unfortunately, the legs of uh, components would get lodged in there, and every now and then you'd reach down to grab or yeah. to shake it out, and you would get impaled by yeah, the then... leg of a component. Then we learned about mats. That yeah, you then could we got put mats. a mat on That's your right. desk. Yeah, who would have thought? And that like gets splinters and yeah, loose yeah. stuff. Hey, don't get why are you, don't be so advanced on me yet. Um, then we've got this is uh, this is where we started getting serious, right? This is where the assembly line in its truest self was born. Um, we moved. We used to have a music store, and it was kind of a short-lived thing. If you're like a hardcore jhs you may person you may have actually been to the store at one point or another it was pretty cool i worked there for a hot second and then we closed it and then i went back to assembly um when we moved up here we decided to unbeknownst to anybody um and by anybody i mean josh we just decided to start doing an assembly line process mm -hmm. uh where we would kind of tag team bins of pedals all at once because we were getting these <laughs> these kinds of oh nope not these ones it would be these kinds of circuits and so we sort of developed a system me and that guy right there is nick he's another nick and him and i tag teamed uh and created a an assembly line system mm -hmm. um which is cool there this is our history wall and you can see basically every version of our pedals that we've done so you can see here that like there's been a thousand different variations of each one, um, which just goes to show how we're constantly trying to make things more and more efficient. So this is uh, the stamping desk where we would actually hand stamp these. Now, today we have printing, mm -hmm. but back in the day, we would have to stamp all of these. If you go to the top down camera, you can see this is sort of faded mm -hmm. here. Um, and we would have to hand stamp them. And we don't, there were, I think there were probably only three people in the entire world who could do it right. Yes. Um, and it was, it was a very hard thing to do. And so then we ended up having our cases printed so that we didn't have to rely on stamping. Cause again, this was just another thing that took a long time to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I have, I have two awesome questions. Yeah. Can I interrupt? Yep. Okay. First one is how many pedals are we currently building per day? Ooh, that's average. a good question. Bell. That's a good question. On average, um, it's anywhere between four to 600 pedals per day. Okay. That's crazy. Um, so somewhere between the 2,500 to 3,000 pedal per week. It just depends on what we're building. Nice. If we're building a ton of three series, we can build like a thousand of those in a day. Yeah. If we're building color yeah. boxes, they take a bit longer. That's a lot of three um, series pedals. Yeah. yeah. I actually have our numbers from oh, wow. some years past. That's amazing. Ooh. Um, Here in 2017, we have a... You Tally mark? That, you have a 691 pedal week, Whoa. which is now like, we can do that in a day. <sighs> That's crazy. Um, 2018, we're building like 1,700 pedals in a week. Yeah, we were just like tally marking how many pedals we were building, and now it's all digital yeah, spreadsheets yeah. and all that. I love seeing these like notebooks because it just takes me back. When we were in Josh's basement when he first moved up here, we were building like, I don't know, like 10 pedals a week, if that. <laughs> like, And that was insane. Like, We would literally like one for one fulfilling orders. If there was a damaged case, it was like th 
we didn't have a case for the order. Now yeah. we'll get um, our cases from Temple. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, and we'll just, you guys are super like thorough. We're with- very, very picky about Blums now. I mean, and we are producing in such large quantities that it's not abnormal for us to have, you know, decent amount of, it's not like if we have one blemmed petal, we're like, ah! right, right, you know? right. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll get in pallets of like 2000 petals at yeah. a time or 2000 cases at a time. And you know, yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. We get to be super picky about the quality right. and how they look and everything. Right, which is great for you guys because you get the you get the best of the best. Um, so let's start going through like Bell. Can you start walking us through the process? And maybe what we need to do is we need to. I'm going to activate this building table over here, Driller. Why don't you start assembling some stuff? Okay. Uh, just, build, boys, just pick, build. Come on, boys, build. Activate. We have to build. Hey, Activate. We had another top chat from yeah. Barry, Barry Morgan. Um, he asks. Uh, thanks, Barry. He asks a question: Is it true that there will be a three series octave? Hint. Wink. Wink. Nudge. Nudge. I just wanted to acknowledge you, Barry. We see you. Moving on. Um, so we're gonna have Driller start building some stuff, and we're gonna be giving away how many? Four pedals. Four pedals. Four pedals built on this live. Heck yeah! This very this Can very moment. Emperor? Yeah, Vampir yeah. is sick. Addison's gonna build some. I'm gonna build one. Driller's gonna build some. We got Morning um, Glory, a Mini Foot, a Double Barrel, and an Emperor. Yeah, and we're gonna drop a question in a little bit to get um pick some winners. Yeah. Bell, I'm gonna give you the pointer of destiny. And oh. if you just yeah, if you hit the arrow on okay. that computer, you can kind of go through these uh these pictures and I kind of put them in order. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I was okay. really prepared. So, I'm going to start assembling this morning glory. Yeah. Okay. That's going to go to somebody. Um I feel like w- I need to show this J- driller just told me I could break this. Oh yeah, I'm oh, going to do, do mine it. too. It's you do yours. Okay. okay. All right, here goes. Ooh, oh, that's that a satisfying ASMR. Do very it satisfying. Here we go. All right, here we go. I'm going to um <laughs> There we go. Excellent. All right, Belle, take it away. Okay, so here we have trays of cases that have been prepped, which means they have been cleaned and inspected for any sort of blems, blemishes, um, like bubbles in the powder coat or scratches or anything like that. They get looked over and cleaned and put on these trays, and then they get printed. And this is them sitting on a printer getting printed Um, we print one side at a time so the um, backs of the cases are getting printed all the logos Um, and uh, you can count and see how many that is being printed at a time (laughs) I'm not gonna do it (laughs) hey do we leave the locking washer on the switches we sure do nice yeah Um, yeah so there we go those are cases getting printed and um, that's them getting printed on the faces amazing and that's them getting printed on the sides. There you go. Um, All the angles. We can print. So the three series, um, they're very exciting to build here because we can do so many in a day. So it's very exciting for everyone because they can, they printed before, I believe, close to 3,000 cases, three series cases in that's one amazing. day. 3,000? It's it's two, to, two or three. I'm sure yeah. Tom, our print tech, is watching this right now being like, it was, it was I know 2,567. Yeah. Yes. Because he would know the exact He number. would know. Um, but yeah. Shout out to Tom, by the way. Shout out to Tom. Tom uh, you've seen Tom on, uh, I'm trying to think of, oh, the three series launch video. Um, we have several employees playing guitar. Tom is on there and he plays the headless guitar and he plays some, like, mm-hmm. he plays a lot of metal stuff. He is very very talented at his job yes he also makes sure like fixes he's like a very he fixes fix it everything kind of, around it's the amazing. building like just a, such such a swell guy he basically makes sure that we don't fall apart yeah um All right. he's the most like detail-oriented human that you will ever yeah. meet um he's amazing you can he's pro he's on a lot of like tiktok record times and yeah tiktoks and stuff so yeah um, here we have a bin of prepped circuits. So all of our boards go through like a prep phase. Um, so typically that's just wiring on. Um, Nick showed you the 
switch on there. We'll wire on a couple wires and put that onto the board or um, there will be some standoffs. Um, I don't think we have standoff pedals here, but there will be a little bit of prep work that we'll do on circuits just to kind of eliminate more of the process from the actual building so that once they go to get assembled, it's just like throw the circuit into the case, put the hardware on. You don't have to do the extra work. It's just efficiency. Yeah. And I think a part of that efficiency, like so a part of developing these processes, um, processes, Yes. I processes? Processes? I don't know. Processes? That's a word. If Joshua was here, he would scold me about my grammar. But you like, are doing great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much. A part of like developing assembly, the assembly line is about like eliminating the amount of decisions you have to make and the amount yes. of movements. Yes. Like, so with every reach for a tool, literally is taking up time. Mm -hmm. And so if you only have to reach for one tool, mm -hmm. that saves time. Or it's if finding the path of least resistance. Exactly, exactly. And like, it's the little things. It's like, we'll have bins of hardware. So you'll have your washers and nuts and Nutrix washers and jacks and like foot switch washers and foot switch, blah, 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 blah. And then knobs. And like ordering them up from left to right so that you're going like boop, 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 boop instead of like, ah, yeah, there's right, everything. Right. My life is chaos. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I have a question. Um, what happens if a builder, what happens if they break one of the circuits? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, say one of us over here was trying to put oh. the emperor in its case. And you broke the ribbon cable. And the ribbon cable broke, I don't know how. I, yeah, it's because ribbon cables are, you gotta be, you have to handle, worst. you have to handle a ribbon cable. Okay. Like a newborn baby. Got it, okay. Or like a little snowflake. Got it. Um, we so, have a lovely repairs department. Are you we telling me that- We have fantastic techs. That, that can, can it be repaired that. so I should not make a big, d I should be careful yes, with this. Yes, okay, it can be repaired. I actually did break it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's, we're still gonna give this away. It's just gonna be uh, repaired first before we give it away. Yes, yes. our fantastic repair techs, Tanner, right. Jamie, and Dustin yes. can fix that emperor for Ooh, you. Thank goodness. You know what? I might even just run it over there. I'm sure they will be very pleased. <laughs> To fix your ripping cable. <laughs> I've been as tube streamer in the chat said, here's $10 adding to Josh's donation so we at least have enough to cover one cup of coffee. I have news for you, I've been as tube screamer. That's not enough, bro. Josh is into like really expensive coffee nowadays. So anyways. He's into that mocha frappa lappa. He is. I had to go get hardware for my morning glory because I, I realized I didn't have any. I put it in the bed. No. Did I not? No, you didn't. Nope. Bro. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. Uh, I I apologize. You threw her under the bus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Let's continue with this slideshow so that people okay. can see, <laughs> see how this all works. This is our storage room. These are boxes of circuits. Um, we label these very cleanly and nicely. We took a while for us to find a perfect labeling system. There's a couple of pedal circuits too that like have very similar letters. Yes. Which we, which ones have like the most? Because you were it was like how do we differentiate between like are you okay Addison? Oh, Addison just sorry. almost died. <laughs> um, I'm back. Yes, there there have been a lot of. Uh, I'm trying to think specifically. Hold, I'm. They'll come to me. It's okay. We have to have really good abbreviations to not mix up our circuits. Right. Um, three series circuits look virtually identical. Right. Um, they have a very small like color dot indicator on one of the components on the circuits. That's very small, and it's hard to tell what color it is sometimes. So before we build, we like test. We take a circuit unbuilt um, to the testing room and make sure we have like everything got labeled properly. There's a lot of reassurance that has to happen mm -hmm. with something like a three series, um, because yeah, the indicators are just it smaller. do be a, it do be do be like that. Three series are the most simple and complicated thing about production. This is all of our prep circuits here. More of that. Here we have somebody soldering the power on a. That looks like is, is that, that a muffaletta? I can't see from here. I think it's a muffaletta. Yeah. 
And then we've got somebody uh, doing trim pots. Jamie's uh, doing the trim pots on a how PG-14. Many of our, how many of our pedals um, have switched over to the board mounted jacks like this one I have here? A lot of them. A like lot. most of them have. And yeah. it's a super helpful part of our process to eliminate more soldering. Um, just makes things cleaner yeah. and quicker and less less margin for Excuse error. Me. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And putting then we have knobbing. knobs. Okay, we knobs. should let's talk about putting let's knobs. Let's talk on about pedals. putting knobs on pedals. <laughs> yep. So back in my day, back we in my we day. had to use just our eyes and our hearts to yeah. put knobs on pedals. Oh, okay. um, what I would like to do, Bell, yeah, is I would like to put the knobs on this morning glory but with my own eyes and then i can to judge see you. if i if i still got it and then you can judge me I would but love um to. how do we put knobs on now i think there's a little we have this, this jig? beautiful tool um i'm gonna try to say this this is pepper's petals better setter <laughs> Wow. What? I did it. That's what it's um, called? Yes. This company, Pepper's Petals, he makes these yeah, um, fantastic um, setters for knobs. So it basically has this, you loosen this up here. Can you hand me up oh, here? Um, I'm going to try to do this backwards. <gasps> um, put it like this, and then you level it out at the edge of the case. And then these indicators here, I don't know if you can see from oh. there, those white lines will those show are you lines are supposed to go. where they should sit so that your knob has an even sweep. Right. And that, it's very, it. sometimes you will find yourself sitting on the assembly line just like, no, it's, it's just a, it's a little too low. Oh, yeah, no, that's yeah, a little yeah, too yeah. high. And then, wait, and then you just start to kind of lose your mind a little bit. So it's, it's, it's nice to have a little bit of reassurance. We have some fantastic builders here who are so good at knobbing pedals that they don't use this anymore, but it is really great for training people, for newbies, or if you are having one of those days where you're just sliding into a obsessive spiral and you just need a little friend to tell you where you're, how you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this is for. Spies. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> yes, you know all about it's the knob eyes. Nah yeah. So what my technique was always get get them on, and then if you if you mirror it, they mm -hmm. should they should look totally mirrored. So I've got the knobs on this. I I think that they look pretty good. If I do say so myself. Would you like to check my work with the Peter Piper? Peter nope. Pipe Peppers, Pe Peppers, Pe Pe Peppers Pedals Peppers Pedals Peppers Pedals Better Center. You guys are doing Amazing. great. Thank you. Um All right. Check check my work. Okay. Okay. Can you do it backwards? <laughs> yeah, I will. I just got to get on there. Okay. All right. So this one's pretty good. He's only off by like the teensiest teensiest oh. bit. Wait, hold on. Are we sure that I've It's Are they all turned Are down they all turned there? right? Yeah, I mean, his black the black dot on this knob is sitting like just above the white line i mean if i hold on let me just look at this with my eyes first um okay yeah if i were to look at this with my eyes i would tell you that your volume and your 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 volume is perfect okay yeah your tone is a touch too high and your drive is a touch too high do let you see. see that let me look at this top down camera I would like in the comments everyone for in everyone the comments to just that I have a problem. I want I want you <laughs> to all I look. I think this looks pretty perfect. But here you I, throw the I do on agree. There so I do maybe the drive is a little high. So let's see. It goes like it goes like this. Yep. Okay. There's that. So you can see the indicators. Yeah, it's a little high, but you know. I mean that's really good. You haven't built pedals in a long time. I haven't time. built pedals in a long time. Okay. That's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, awesome. Hey, and you know what's amazing is that I've done, I'm done with this. I finished building yeah. the morning glory. And now I just it kind of blows my mind, and it also makes me want to cry and throw something like how quickly I just made mm -hmm. this, um, as opposed to even like, I mean, this is pretty quick to make too. But you have to, you know, wire the power. Um, this just took forever. So, okay, let me let me give you a little. Do you remember how long one of those would take? Did you ever time yourself? I did. I I don't really have a place in 
like I don't have like a file a cabinet in my brain for like numbers, so oh. I don't remember. Mm. But we used to assemble these. Uh, we would the first part. Well, I can do top down for this. I use the pointer of destiny. So you can see there's kind of these quadrants of wires. There's this side, the right side, the left side, power, and then there's this front frontal section where the LED would attach. And so the way that we would do these is we would have what we called pre-assembly, mm -hmm. which was your prep, circuit prep. Yeah. And a lot of times that would be either, uh, would be a lot of times just putting the circuit in the case because that takes a second. Mm -hmm. And then once the circuit switch uh, jacks were on the case, including the power jack, uh, one person would wire power and this side and the next person would wire this side and add the led so like we split the soldering up yeah. between multiple people so you were only ever having to focus on like the same motion right. over and over again because the like we were talking about earlier the amount that you could like eliminate uh like divergence eliminate, eliminate divergent movements uh, and streamline the mm -hmm. faster this would go so there would be at one point i would be at the end of the assembly line just wiring leds mm -hmm. to, to have enough leds ready um how which long did just, that take you nick well it would it wasn't like you know it'd be like a couple seconds per led but you, you're constantly getting like people are constantly passing, passing you stuff you. Okay. so you're like quickly wiring up wires mm -hmm. to an led soldering them clipping did you leads. guys ever get Damn. like like in a healthy way like yeah. competitive where you would start like almost like racing or like seeing how fast you could do it yeah well sometimes the really what would happen back in the day would be like somebody would leave the assembly line to go to the mm. bathroom and then you would passive aggressively do yeah, their part yeah, of the yeah, pedal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then by, by the time they come back you're like Oh, it's fine. It's totally fine. You were gone for like five minutes because I did all of you. I did your whole part for you. Um, mm. So we have kind of walked through the some of the assembly process. Belle, let's talk about our most hated, yes. our most hated pedals. Let's do to that assemble. of the past. And I I want to be clear. Love the pedal. Sometimes there's processes you hate. It's like um, cleaning your room is not fun, but it's fun to have a clean room. You know, this it's doesn't really reflect beautiful. on, for example, my pick, the Panther, the OG Panther. Amazing uh, pedal was a big deal for us. I absolutely hated putting this together. There, These um, jacks. And I, I'm, I'm glad you're here, Belle, because I feel like not very many people can relate mm. Uh Li getting all these jacks lined up, lined up properly oh. is such a pain and there was a period of time getting it in the case i can only dude. imagine because you have to you put them all in you do like two threads like a tiny yep. like two threads on all of them and then you go through and you do like two more threads and yeah. you have to like straighten it all out and and there are these uh little tiny we're getting so nerdy i, I hope everybody's hanging in there for this there are these two tiny little washers right here and these basically like uh, 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 keep them flush against the wall and they would fall off mm. all the time while we were trying to put them in. And there's a period of time where we got these cases and the way that they were drilled, I don't know what they were doing, but it was like they weren't oiling the drill bit. So it was melting the metal on the inside of the case. So it was like spikes. Mm. So when you went to go push this in, there were like spikes like claws keeping it from going in so we had to go in and with a file and mm -hmm. like file down the inside of That's the what holes modding the rat was like when you had mm -hmm. to drill the toggle nut hole because there's like on the rat there's like a plastic the covering yeah. um and the metal underneath and you would drill it and like oh. you'd have just like metal spikes oh, coming so. out wow. yeah yeah um so you had to like clean up all of the the metal would like come out in the plastic or whatever material it is on top yeah on this guy um would like bloop out yeah it was bad and you'd have to like 
get it down so yeah. that when you put the toggle nut on it, there's not just like metal shavings like. Yeah. What was your what's your least favorite? What was in your assembly days your least favorite? The mini foot. The freaking mini foot. The old version mini foot. So show the inside so they can yeah. see. So we have this tiny, tiny little circuit board here that you the LED is soldered into the circuit board and once you once you manage to wire the jacks and the foot switches from the board. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, it like I feel like sweaty looking yeah, at this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um you have to like push the board down and then hold the board with your finger and then glue the LED in and hold the board while the glue, glue. dried. Dude, and if yes. you let oh go, my gosh. if you let go, all the hot glue will go through the, the bezel yeah, and get all over everything. And the thing is, if you mess this up, you have to like you. It, it, there's not. You have a, to take everything yeah, apart. There's not a like, lot to of get ways to, to those pots. Back. If you wired one of these pots wrong, oh, you have no. to. <laughs> it was so bad. And like, I don't know if anyone watching this has ever had a hot glue burn oh my oh God. yeah but it's like oh, it yeah. just never because you get it on this hand and then your yeah. brain goes get it off and then you go and listen yeah. and it's just like ah. it's because it's a slow burn i would rather mm. i prefer soldering iron burns yeah. over glue burns this is because, something i didn't think we would get into yeah. S soldering iron burns versus hot glue burns. because they're fast you almost don't even realize it yep. happens because it's so hot and it's just annoying afterwards right, while right. it's healing but with glue burns it just feels like it's never going to end. Yeah. And you just see your life flash before your <laughs> eyes and you just fall into like a black hole of chaos, like into a void. I mm. have a stinger for this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. Goodness. The amount of burns and, and scratches and stuff that you get assembling mm. is just absurd. Or did you ever um, putting knobs on? Um, do you have the tool? The yeah. flathead? Uh, the flathead, yes. So when you're putting a knob on, there's this tiny screw, yep. and you set it like that, and then sometimes you'll slip oh, and yeah. stab underneath Under your, your fingernail. fingernail, and it's yes. a cut that you can't do anything about because no. it's hiding. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, ironically, the other one that was really hard to put together was the panther cub. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, we have a double board here. So this is the like OG panther cub, um, and... We had to we had to create these shields. Um, if you have if you have one of these panther cubs, gives me gives me a thumbs up in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, and just know that things were sacrificed for you. Yeah, we we did it. We did this for you um, because we cared and we loved you. These were made with love. Yeah, pain and pain. Uh, these, if it's really hard, maybe top down you can see it. If you look really close. There, you can kind of see on the edges, there's like a little shiny, like laminate looking thing. We used to have to take this metal, these metal sheets and laminate uh, them in uh, literal, through a laminator. Mm -hmm. It was like this, um, what's it called? There's like a term for it. It's like anti-static. Yeah, it's anti-static mat material. Sheet, yeah. Material, whatever, yeah. Um, and because these two boards would have issues like interfering with each other so we had to create this shield to protect the pedal from itself and so creating these was a whole process mm -hmm. so we would have literally create sheets and we had a cut, them a, cut a, a template, template that we had that we would cut them out and then put them in and it was this one is zip tied in for some reason i don't know yeah why. we That's used so weird. standoffs for those yeah we used like little screws and stuff um but yeah this was another one that was just a pain we also have the color box here this was a color box was another source of here, Belle, you, you hold mm. this one. The color box no. was another double board pedal. There's not much you can see from the back here. Yeah, but, but inside is a is a field of broken dreams. Yes, because the foot switch is here, which means that when you put this board in There's like, no going back. There's no going back. And when you solder that you have the the circuit will be like this, like at this angle. So you're like soldering the foot switch in while the board is like no i want to go this way yeah and then the led is the same situation where that was soldered and 
you have to wire the power at the end. You can't wire it before you screw the board in. So you have to stick your soldering iron very delicately yeah, in here that tiny little and hole. not melt the wires because yeah. then you have to take it all yeah. apart and change out the wires. It's ridiculous. This is a good time to ask the question, what temperature do we run our soldering irons at oh, here, Bill? Yeah. Someone asked in the chat, do you do know? You know? Not off the top of my head. I'm I remember sure. when Beck and I were building, I was yeah. about 770 ish degrees, about right. something like yeah. that. That's, that, that sounds about, about right. right. We probably have a photo of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, guys. Let's, I'm let's pull dyslexic. these photos back up. Um, <laughs> also, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, 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 no you nope. go. No, but it's okay. I got okay, distracted. Fine. Go ahead. It's, uh, People have very strong opinions about their soldering iron temperature. 775? Driller yeah. says 7075. Oh. Yeah. Amazing. So in this picture, you can see this is uh, what stage is this, Bell? This is prepping. So here, it looks like he's soldering power and ground wires to okay. a pulp and peel circuit. Nice. And then let's go through here. And okay, what's are, going on here? Yeah, those are the foot switches. So earlier on, Nick showed the foot switch on this morning glory. Um, so we would tape down a whole row of these because they will not hold still while you solder them. And you have to very delicately put wires in each of those holes there that are at the end. Uh, there's two on each. You solder the wires on there, and then that gets soldered onto the circuit. Yeah. So you'll have somebody just go through and just yeah. prep a we ton of like these. Yeah, we have like a gigantic tub of hundreds of them that are like pre-wired. Oh, there's a rat. And sometimes you need rats to build rats. Yeah. You know. Uh, okay, oh, I just yeah. want to talk about this. So this is one of my most favorite things that has been implemented are these like mom Tupperware they're, they're containers. They're our cereal containers. I love these so much. Um, so knobs we order in these pallets of knobs do you have some right here yes don't flip it over <laughs> okay, I won't. do not flip it over uh oh. so they come like this and to get them in you have to i'm not gonna do it because i don't want to make everybody angry with me um there is they're in this little you can i'll just like there we go they come in these these little pallets, and then we empty them out. And you said, uh, "What's your technique?" Because there, you can yeah. make some pretty big errors mm -hmm. getting these into those beautiful containers. Yeah. What so, What was your technique for doing this? Because I have a technique. I know you're a shell down kind of person. I am a plastic. I like the pl put the plastic down. So. So you like if, to flip it the other way. Yeah. But only when you're ready, because okay. this plastic will, as soon as you flip it over, that will break and knobs will spill everywhere. Yeah. So once you get it to the to a safe, comfortable location, I like to flip it over and then peel the shell off and then take the corners of the plastic to funnel them in. Because if you have the shell down, oh. all of these are gonna like they cling to their cubby holes, so you have okay. to like you have to like tap them and like make them come out of the shell, and then it's they fall they fall out easier. Interesting. I personally feel that I have much more control okay. with the wrapper. Um, uh, how does everybody feel like they're being educated? Like I know that there is probably no other use for this information in anyone else's life, but this is just how stuff is made. Hey, this we, is how it gets done. We have about twelve hundred people here with us, Amazing. and they have been the whole time. So hey. they're here for it. They are into it. They want to know. People are like telling us that they've sold their other pedals to buy JHS stuff recently. That's amazing. So I'm like, come on. There's so much love here. That's great. That's great, isn't it? So I'm a plastic up guy. Or at least I was, and my I can't I won't do it. But what I would do is I would I would have my my bin of whatever I was putting the knobs in. I would take the plastic off, and then I would create th this shape and kind of funnel them in. And you're making a face at me like like this is the worst. It makes me nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> No, because especially mini knobs, they don't want to come out of the shell. Yeah. I never and had those. I never had to deal with those small knobs, yeah. just the regular guys like this. Yeah. I mean, whatever makes it so that you don't make a mess yeah. is the right way for you. Yeah. I just think that um, I'm right. So. Amazing. Um, I, I've. 
someone came in here and they tapped me on the shoulder and then they like disappeared like a ghost. And I'm pretty sure that it was Ernie Ball trivia time. Hey everyone, welcome to Ernie Ball Trivia Time, where we ask a question and Ernie Ball gives away an entire box of strings, bass strings, guitar strings. Do they make mandolin strings, banjo strings? I think they do. I don't really know. But if you get the question right, you get a whole box of your choice. So if everyone's ready, here is your question for today. In what year did Leo Fender stop making the original Stingray bass to focus on a new G&L design? Throw it in the comments, and if you're the very first one that I see on my end, you're going to get a whole box of strings. Amazing. Yep. And it looks like you guys have completed your pedals. Have you completed them? Let's get a look at these. So we got a, we have a driller built double barrel. Addison, did you do the, you did the Emperor? I did. Well, that and got it, fixed. Did it get fixed? Dustin fixed oh. it. Wow. Dustin. Props to Dustin. Yeah, shout out yes. to the repairs team. They're legends. Shout out. I ran we, over there, got these soldered, amazing. and they gave me a definite number for what the soldering irons are at. It's, okay. it's 750. 750. Okay. 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 Dustin's is at 761. Okay. I've Just, seen some 770s hmm, or 776s, okay. but 750, that sounds pretty standard. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Dustin. We're going to have to pull some trivia for future things from this episode. So <laughs> you're going to need to remember these numbers and these mm-hmm. factoids. That's right. Um, I have my morning glory done. Uh, I think that we should um, throw out the question we for, for winning these, and we'll okay. announce, we'll just announce all the winners for everything at the same time in the last couple minutes here because we're going to wrap up. Um, how many parts? This is this is top level trivia. How many parts are in the pack rat? Throw your answers down in the comments. There's a there's a definitive answer to this. Um, the pack rat, it's a double board as well, right, Bell? Yeah, it is. Um, there is, if you see, these t- screws here um, are uh, attached to standoffs that attach the um, front half of the board. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's a part of the prep process where we'll have people go through and connect the boards together with standoffs. And then in this this rotary pot, um, rotary pots have these little pins all around them that you have to put these They're very, very, tiny. very, very, very tiny pins into the correct spots so that it will stop and start at the right yes. place. The uh, color box also has them and they are so small and so hard to find if you drop them on yeah. the floor. So don't drop them on the floor. Driller. <laughs> Driller knows all about this. Um, wow. Well, this has been amazing. Belle, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thank you for enlightening us with all of your assembly knowledge. Um, we appreciate. We just want to give a big just hand hand clap to the assembly line downstairs. They're amazing. It is because of you that this was, you know, without them content, there's nothing to make videos about. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. reason to do this stuff. So we have an amazing team downstairs who are chugging away as we speak just literally ripping through hundreds of pedals today and it's incredible addison do we got answers we have answers we got answers i'm getting close here just just kill like a minute and a half more for me can i ask you about the wireless tap tempo oh yeah okay of the wireless tap tempo uh there was back in the day uh we got a return in and it was a tap tempo and a guy had had it for like six months, and we were like, what could possibly be wrong with this tap tempo? And we open it up, and lo and behold, I had built it. And when I say I had built it, I mean I had put a switch in a case mm. and some jacks in a case, uh, but I did not put any wires in it. Mm. So we had uh, given this very patient person a what I called uh, the wireless tap tempo. It was a new mod you were trying So, out. yeah, definitely pa- I've patented the technology uh, don't try to steal it from me, but it was a little embarrassing because I, mm. I was. It was one of those where they got it out and they were like, "There aren't any wires." I was like, <laughs> "What idiot would do that?" And then I was like, "Oh, it was me." Oh, and then because we also used to initial backplates. Well, that's as well. right, right. Um, we would initial backplate so you could know who m- done messed up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we used to sign all of these. So if you get any that have an NDL on it or a 
What did you sign yours? Did you put I your initials? L. I probably used to do I L okay. I L or B L. Nice, nice. We got answers. We got answers. we got winners. We got winners. All right, first uh, first winner we're gonna uh, announce is for Ernie Bell Trivia Time. The question was: In what year did Leo Fender stop making the original Stingray bass to focus on a new G N L design? The answer was 1979. Heather Garland. Woo! Heather. You have won. Woo! You did it. So email the JHS show at jhspedals.com and we'll get your info for a whole box of strings from Ernie Ball. And then we have four winners. We picked the first four folks that got the answer correct uh, in the chat, and we're just going to randomly assign each one of you um, one of these pedals that were built today. Those four winners are WizKid Raven, Beers and Waffles, Werner Smith, and Dog Hawk, Hawk Hunter. Dog Hunter. Hawk Hunter. That's hard to say. So the question was, how many parts are in the pack rat? The correct answer was 261. Woo! So you four got it right again. Amazing. Yeah. Whiskey Raven, Beers and Waffles, yeah. Werner Smith, Dog Hawk Hunter. That's Way right. To go, guys. And hey, us. hey, hey, hey. What? What? And if you're not those people, yeah. Don't even think about don't emailing even us. Okay? Think about it. Hey, this has been amazing. I've had a really good time talking about this. Um, even if it's just selfishly to mm-hmm. be able to share the assembly like lore the journey, and the, the journey lore. with you. Um, this has been really incredible. So we're going to wrap up. Thank you guys for watching. Um, definitely leave a comment uh, about what you thought about this. If you'd like to see more about maybe some behind the scenes of how we do stuff here, let yeah. us know. Uh, that's it. See ya. Heck yeah. Any last words? None? Nothing at all. None last it's words. It's been a good day. None last. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.